Well, hey, I'm Pastor Scott Shemeth, Christian Life Church, and I'm out here on a turnpike, on the Berlin Turnpike, uh, and you see behind me the flag, and uh, it's flying at half-mast, because Governor Lamont uh, decided to do that on behalf of the COVID victims. And so we're grieving with all of you who have lost loved ones, we're standing with you, we're recognizing that loss in a difficult time to minister and to be with your loved ones. So uh, we're here, it's flag day. That's the reason we're here with this big flag flying. We're actually at Chick-fil-A's, but I'm not advertising anything there. But you know, there's a lot of <clears throat> tensions in the world. There's a lot of tension with uh, uh, the COVID and the potential illness. Some people are very, very concerned about it. They're very anxious about it. and and others much more nonchalant. But uh, a lot of tension with that. There's a lot of international tension with China, with Iran, uh, around the globe we have that kind of attention. You may be feeling some economic tension if you've been laid off. Certainly there's been racial tension. We've seen the riots, we've seen the protests and this kind of thing. But in the midst of it all, I want to assure you that our flag still flies. And you see it behind me and America's gonna go on and the world's gonna go on and the Christian flag still flies Christ still goes on the church still goes on and so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the flag today in just a minute but before I do let me mention a couple other things last week uh, last Sunday was the first week back and we really loved being back together now this is not to guilt or shame anyone if you don't feel comfortable coming back just watch it from this stream we're going to be streaming it as always regularly weekly uh, but if you're comfortable come on back it was so nice to see all the smiles through the masks you can tell when people are smiling and uh you're not required to wear a mask it's just recommended some wore masks some didn't but uh, we spaced out the chairs and we, Kathy had the worship and the Pongos had the worship going out and it was a nice service. Uh, good good um, <clears throat> time being together, greeting one another together. So that first service uh, back was happy. We had communion, it was nice worshiping together again. And so just a word to you, just a word of encourage, if you're, encouragement, if you're comfortable, uh, try it this week. Come on, everything's sort of safe and in order, and we'd love to see you out. Um, as far as the nursery and the children's church, we're not holding those, so it'll be a family service. Those kids and young people will sit with you. The nursery and the restrooms, of course, will be open and change the babies. And if you get, if your children get a little rambunctious and they got to get the wiggles out on each campus, there's a big field that you as a parent can just walk them over there and they could run around and they could do that kind of thing. <coughs> and so uh, we're, we're starting to plan with the staff how to, how to reopen the children's programs, but we're not ready to do that just yet. Uh, we're loving the outside services. Last Sunday the breeze was blowing, the sun was shining, it was just the perfect temperature. And it looks like this uh, is going to be that way uh, again, so we just thank the Lord for that. But we are, as a staff, preparing to move inside. We're thinking about all the things we have to do to stay safe. We're getting the campuses ready. And so whether we're outside or inside, we're gonna handle it well and uh, stay safe. There's one thing I wanna mention to you that's kind of special, and that is the issues uh, over race and racism and the uh, corruption and what's happening with some of, across the United States right now. Um, I am working on, and, and we're going to work together as a board to set a statement, a policy, a perception of Christian Life Church, a statement toward racism, <coughs> toward corruption, um, and toward families that have been hurt because of injustice. And uh, I, I really, I really feel wounded for those who have been subjected to, to. To this corruption, to this lack of justice, and the very entity, the government that's supposed to protect us, the police force that's supposed to protect us, has actually, in some cases, brought harm. And so those families need healing. 
And then also uh, the police, we want to consider their role and the so many wonderful police and the wonderful things that the government is doing. But we're going to be preparing a statement and then I'm going to let the whole church review it and then we'll, we'll call it ours. So we'll be putting that together uh, shortly here in, in the days and, and weeks to come. Uh, I want to pause right now and just pray for this particular topic. Father, I pray for those families that have been harmed and hurt, those individuals that have spent time in prison that never should have, or have been wounded that never should have, Lord God. We pray, Lord, you give us listening ears and compassionate hearts, loving hearts, Lord God. And we pray healing and strength, reconciliation and redemption for each of those who have been wounded by entities that should be helping us, Lord God. Father, I pray for the police force, that, Lord, there are so many good police, and I just pray uh, and I thank you for them, Lord. I ask you to bless them. And th those that have chosen a, a lesser path, I pray, Lord, you would call them back to where they belong and where they want to be, Lord God. I pray uh, all our police and our government will be um, truthful and honest and righteous, Lord God. I thank you for that, Lord God. And I pray for our nation. That seems troubled. Uh, God, bless us, have mercy on us, and help us through this, I pray. I thank you, Lord, for, for all you're doing. And then lastly, for us as a church, Lord, help us to humbly love people, all people, your way, Lord God. I thank you and ask this in Christ's name, amen and amen. <coughs> well, just a note on finances. You know, when you wanna build a big fire, you got to throw fuel on it and keep throwing fuel on it. And so you'll notice, and you're going to hear some more today from our staff, uh, we're really fueling up children's ministries, youth ministries, young adults, uh, family ministries. We're really putting staff in place to um, sort of force the issue and step into those arenas and make a difference because families need a lot of uh, a lot today and we want to bless them and so we're staffing that and so we're fueling the fire as a church and that's what we do with our offering when we support the ministries it's like throwing logs throwing brush on the fire and it starts to, to get up higher and hotter and starts to burn well so I'm just gonna say uh, you know you're gonna give online recurring or drop it in the box as you come in on Sunday <coughs> <coughs> But um, know that you are just throwing a log on the fire, a few logs on the fire, and get it burning hot for these babies and these children, these young adults. So thank you for all your faithfulness, all your, your giving. And uh, so I want to introduce to you a couple of people. First of all, Jessica Brown. She's working on the Berlin campus, but she will also be helping on the Vernon campus. She is going to be handling the the. the family administration and uh, specifically ministering in the in the area of mothering and uh, there's several on the team that's going to be doing this but we're gonna start that uh, in the fall in a big way but in the meantime she's got a blog going or, or uh, uh, online zoom weekly meeting going she's got materials for people and so she's really helping moms through this and uh, you met Lizzie Carrera um, uh, she's on staff now. She's going to be helping, uh, helping Linda and helping in the office and beginning to let the Lord use her in our church. And then the Melendez family. Um, you met them last week and you're going to keep meeting them. They're our family pastors, our new family pastors. I love them. And they're just going to be growing in relationship with you and your family. So let's hear from them and then we'll uh, have some worship and I'll be back. Morning, CLC kids. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pastor Javier, and I'm the children's or family pastor here at CLC. Um, and I'm excited about today and the story that I have for you today. So um, let's get started. So the Bible has a lot of stories, but one of the stories that I want to talk to you about today is about this man named Moses. Okay, so. 
Uh, you probably heard about some of the stories uh, that, that include Moses. One of them is when he went and, and got through God, he parted the Red Sea so the Israelite could get through and f get free from Egypt. It is an awesome, awesome story. And the cool thing about it is not just a story. It actually happened in real life. So this guy, Moses, um, took all these Israelites um, in the desert. So they were looking for the promised land, the land that God had promised them. So they had arrived to this place, place called Canaan, which it, 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 it means promised land. So they were at the edge of that promised land. And he said, you know what? I need 12 people. So he gathered 12 individuals, which represented every single tribe of that area, meaning there were 12 tribes, 12 different groups of people or families represented in that group. So he said to them, go into this land and find out how these people live, find out what's there and bring me some fruit back. So you know what? They did that. They went in there, they looked around, they gathered some fruit and they brought some stuff back to the to, to the people. So Moses said, you know, so what do you think about the place? So there were 12 individuals or spies that went in there. So they came back. Um, so all of them were like, oh man, this place is so nice. They have really good fruit, very nice places, a lot of water, but there's giants in the land. There's this problem. People are just mean or this and that. So they were, they, even though they saw the great things, they, they focused more on the problem. But then there were two guys. One of them was Caleb. And the other one was uh, Joshua. And um, they said, you know, yeah, you know, the place was great. Yeah, we saw the giants. Yeah, you, we saw the problems, but we can conquer it. We can get through that. We can take over the land. So see, the story today is I want you to understand that even though things don't seem right, even though things uh, don't look perfect, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work out. OK, so even though these people went and the land looked perfect, but there was these giants or there was these problems, um, the other two saw the possibility that God was going to use them in order to get that, that place, in order to get that promised land. So I want you to do something right now. I want you to get your hands and go like this. Put them on eye. OK, and look through that eye. So we're going to call that eye the worry eye. OK, and then we're going to take the, your hands and go like this. And we're going to call that the not so worry eye. OK. Or the trust eye. All right. So let's go through the worry. eye. So we look around. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I see I see a beautiful land. And, but look. Uh oh, yep. I see a, 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 oh, some big animals and and some big people. And uh, I don't know if we can live there. But see, then we look at this with the trust eye and be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know what? I like that fruit right there, I like the trees. Yeah, there's a giant, that's no problem, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, God will take care of that giant. It's okay, yeah, we can live here. See, I want you to understand that even though we have giants in our lives sometimes, and they're not probably physically giants, but I want you to understand that with God, anything and everything is possible. Amen. So I want you to do that. I want you to think about that. I want you to discuss that with your parents. And uh, I, I hope you had a great time. I hope to see you soon. God bless you. And uh, see you later. Morning, everyone. I'm Miss Diana, and I just wanted to share um, a little bit more with you. I hope you really enjoyed Pastor Javier's passage. Um, and I wanted to share some of the words of Jesus with you out of the book of Matthew verses. Uh, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Okay, that's what we're reading from today. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. And it says, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your Heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him? him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed beautifully as they are. And if God 
cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have such little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly father, he already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. God bless you guys. So make sure that you are also practicing your memory verse, 1 Samuel 12, 24. And it says, But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Um, without ado, I, I would love to introduce to you um, Mrs. Jessica Brown. Hi, everyone. I wanted to take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Jessica Brown. I'm the Family and Event Administrator at Christian Life Church for the Berlin campus. I'm also a mom of three little children and a wife. Throughout my life, I always knew how important it was to build relationships with other people. And I had a passion to create new friendships and to connect other women together. Especially when I became a mom, that passion became stronger. I knew that we couldn't do this alone and we needed encouragement and fellowship. The one thing that I really realized was the relationship with God needed to be stronger and to have a group filled with women that were faithful to God was the most important thing that I wanted to create and grow. As some of you might have known, at the beginning of the year, we created a group for moms called Resurrecting Motherhood. We were about to launch it in two days before COVID hit us. And I know for a lot of you that plans, events, groups, any socialization really was put on pause for the past couple months. But that connection with other people, especially other women and moms that are going through different struggles or isolation, or even just everyday little things, needed to be there for people. It needed to still be alive during this time. So I kept thinking and praying, and God kept pulling at my heart, and we came up with this. Once a week, a Zoom meeting, just to kind of see each other's faces again, and also during the week doing a weekly Bible plan on our Bible app. I wanted to invite the, you guys to this, and I wanted to give you my information if this was something that you were interested in. My email is jessicabrown at welovepeople.org, and I would love for you to join us. A room or even a, a Zoom meeting filled with moms of different ages, children, and just different wisdom to be shared each day is something that is so powerful and with the foundation of Christ behind it and encouraging one another and supporting one another is something that I know a lot of women need. So I invite you to join me as we rise together as sisters in Christ. Again, my email is jessicabrown at welovepeople.org and I hope to hear from you soon.
I'm Pastor Scott Shemeth, Christian Life Church, and welcome to the Sunday uh, service. I'm glad we can be together. Uh, it's Flag Day, and I want to talk a little bit about flags and banners and things like that. There was one kindergarten teacher who was feeling patriotic, so she brought her class through singing, My Country, Tis of Thee, Sweet Land of Liberty, and so on. They sang that, and she had some questions for them. She showed them a picture of the American flag, and. And she said, well, what's this? And one little girl raised her hand and said, that's, that's our flag. And the teacher said, okay, well, what's the name of our country? And the little girl said, tis of thee. Our country, tis of thee. <laughs> well, just a little humor at the start of our message. <clears throat> this flag day was started in 1777 on June 14th and it's carried through. And that's what I wanna talk to you a little bit about today, you know, when those five Marines planted that flag on um, Mount Sarabaki um, in, in the World War II and Iwo Jima, um, there was a gentleman, Joe Rosenthal, who snapped a picture of that. And they say that picture is the most reproduced picture of all pictures, I don't know, of photographs, I don't know if that's true, but it's very reproduced. Because there's something about that picture on a mountain planting a flag in the midst of a battle toward the end of the battle when when we have won the battle and now we're planting our flag on that soil a flag is has meaning to it a banner has meaning to it and I want to talk to you about that it's more than a a piece of fabric it's more than just a material object it represents something in this case the American flag represents the United States of America, and that is probably, that flag's probably one of or the most powerful symbol uh, in the world today. And so, in the Bible, we see a battle going on um, with the Amalekites. And the Israelites are down in the valley, they're ready to fight, and Moses is going up with Aaron and Hur to hold up his hands and to be with him. He's going up on the hilltop and the battle is going on, and as he lifts his hands, you know the story, the battle is being won, and as he lowers his hand, the battle is being lost. Well, in the end, long story short, they won. And Moses builds an altar, and the scripture says this, and I'm in Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, and I'm gonna read more of this later. Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, it says this, Moses built an altar and named it the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my flag. And so God gave a great victory that day, and I want to entitle this message, Look to God. Look to God. And so there's all kinds of monuments and flags and banners and emblems and even altars in this world, and they have meaning. They call us to remember a great victory or a great hero or something uh, that has happened. Um, and we need those reminders because we forget our victories oftentimes. And so we have the Washington Memorial. It reminds us of the freedoms we enjoy uh, when we formed our country. We have the Lincoln Memorial. It reminds us in that civil war of that fight for freedom from slavery. We have um, the memorial to Martin Luther King Jr. It reminds us at, as, at uh, of the continuing struggle uh, for racism and how far uh, he helped to bring us and, and the ways we still have to go. I don't know, what's your favorite monument? 
And why is it your favorite monument? Um, I mean, monuments, flags, banners, they mean something. Emblems mean something. And uh, many times it's a point of remembering a significant event. <clears throat> So in this case, it was a significant event because the Amalekites were very powerful and Israel was not so powerful. And so there, it had to be an impossible situation. It had to be a miraculous situation. And so it was. And they could tell that because whenever he lifted his hands, they were winning whenever it was low. They, they realized God was with them in this thing. And so at the end of it, God wanted um, Moses to build an altar. <coughs> and he named that um, the Lord, my banner, Yahweh Nisi. Now, uh, the King James Version says Jehovah Nisi. Let me just give you a little side note. Jehovah is not in the Bible. It's not in the Hebrew. It's not in the Hebrew text in the Old Testament. Nowhere. It's not there. Yahweh is. And what happened was when Israelites went into exile, uh, because of their idolatry, they learned their lesson. They learned to fear God. And when they got out of exile and went back to Israel, they didn't even want to say the name God, Yahweh. So they used the word Adonijah, which is Lord. They would say that, but they would never say Yahweh. And so what they would do when they wrote it is they would write Adonai underneath Yahweh. And in the 1500s, one gentleman compressed those Yahweh and Adonai together and it turned out to be Jehovah. So it's not in the Bible, so it's really Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, my banner. The Lord Yahweh, my banner, Nisi. Let me talk to you about Nisi just a little bit. <coughs> in the American language, banner means basically a long strip of cloth or something like that oftentimes hung on a pole or maybe on a wall with some writing or emblem on it. That's, that's a banner. Um, it's used by knights or monarchs or armies or whatever, some organization. And I want to take the, the definition, the Hebrew definition of Nisi. It has a few definitions and I want to look at each one of those and, and say that we need to look to God. That's really what this is, the Lord, my banner. Um, so first of all, look and belong. Look and belong. There is, um, you know, in the military, there are the military emblems, the flag, the United States military has the United States flag. It's a standard, it's an ensign, and it means something. And on a ship, for instance, on a naval ship, that flag is flying to identify that ship belongs to the United States. That those colors, they fly their colors. And if they were ever, if any ship was ever to surrender, they strike their colors. In other words, they take down the flag, they strike the colors because now they're no longer under the dominion of their country. Now they've surrendered to the dominion of another country. So they take down their flag as a symbol that they are no longer belonging to their country. So. That's a strong uh, signal, a strong symbol, the flag. And again, back to Iwo Jima uh, on World War II, <laughs> in 1945, those five Marines marching up that hill, what a symbol that was, and placing that flag on, on Mount Sarabachi, um, tremendous symbolism. The flag represents something. In, in our case, the United States of America. It could be another nation, it could be an organization, uh, any, any group, but it represents some things. For us, uh, for the United States, it represents our ideals, our dreams, that we have freedom and justice for all. Although not perfect, it's really good. They say about Noah's, Noah's uh, ship on the seas, that it stunk, but it was the best thing afloat. And sometimes that's that it's the best choice we have and I love the idea that we have freedom and liberty and justice for all and we're still working on that and uh, the flag also stands for the men and women who fought and many of them laid down their lives to bring uh, our lives to this quality to, to fill us with hope that we could live the dreams that we have and we're free to do the best we can and pursue happiness <coughs> 
So when we honor the flag, um, we're thinking of what's, what does the, the flag mean? It, it stands for this nation. When we honor the flag, we stand, we're honoring our nation. And we're, we're really saying that we endorse our nation. We love our nation. We're bound to our nation. We're part of our nation. And we're glad to be, when we raise that flag on a flagpole, we're saying, I'm glad to be part of this nation. And I am part of this nation. I'm declaring that, that I belong. I'm an American. Soldiers deployed make a pledge to the flag that they're gonna defend our flag. We, in school, I think it's probably less now than it was before, say the Pledge of Allegiance, or we sing the, the Star Spangled Banner, and um, it's really, uh, it touches my heart, and a tear comes to my eye because I, the words are so pointed that through the night with the bombs bursting, in the dawn's early light, they looked and the flag, the, the representation of the dreams of this country was still standing. It was still there. We were persevering and we were fighting and, and winning. And it's beautiful uh, that on Iwo Jima, that, that flag, those dreams, that hope in all that America stands for was planted on Mount Sarabuchi against that imperial enemy. And God gives us banners or flags or altars, uh, different symbols that that uh, have him behind those things. It said, Moses built an altar and named it, the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. And so when we fly the US flag, we're saying this is under US rule, under US dominion. We are part of, of the United States. When we fly our Christian flag, in a sense, when we use God as our banner, when we go to an altar, <coughs> we're saying the Lord is my banner I am under the dominion I am under the rule of the Lord God Almighty and I want to be and I'm happy to be and uh, we're part of his kingdom so when we raise that flag when we go to an altar when we uh, fly our flag for Jesus and I don't mean literally a Christian flag or something like that but it means I'm for God I'm with God. I love God. I'm in his kingdom. I'm all for God. And God is for me. And I enjoy his protection and his provision. I enjoy his endorsement. And I love to follow him. The Lord is my banner. And so look to the flag and belong. Look to the Lord and belong. <coughs> the Lord is my banner. Secondly, look and believe. First of all, look and belong. You can't, looking's not enough. You can't just look at God and say, oh yeah, I'm glad you're over there, God. You have to look at God and belong to God. You gotta fly that banner of God. But then secondly, you've gotta look and believe. You can't just look at a flag. You have to believe that that flag has power, that that flag, um, means something to you and that God does and that's what they were doing that day when Moses built that altar and named it the Lord is my banner they had just won an impossible victory and they won it hands down because it was the Lord that was with them it was the Lord that was giving them a miracle it was the Lord that was for them and they wanted to memorialize that they wanted to remember that because they were going to have many more battles in the future and they needed to remember God is with us and we can do this thing but God on the other hand he, he is there for us but he needs us to believe for us to have that effect in our lives God needs us to believe in him so we need to belong and we need to believe now I don't know if you remember a couple few years ago, um, Pastor Franco got married. And when Pastor Franco was in the parsonage, eh, we didn't fix it up that much. But when he was having a wife, now all of a sudden, okay, we had to start fixing it up. So, uh, and Pastor Franco was good with that. I mean, you know, it was good. And, and so we got a new um, HVAC, air conditioning, heating, brand new install the bill was ten thousand dollars <throat> i knew we had to do it 
So we did it, but we didn't have the $10,000. And so the, we made an arrangement with the contractor that he would allow us some time to pay it. <clears throat> well, wouldn't you know, acting in faith and taking that step on behalf of others to bless them, in this case, a newly married staff member, the Puskarics who used to come to our church had some transition and they moved to Tennessee. Well, they were feeling led to write us a check and they wrote us a check and I got it in the mail when the bill came in for $10,000. And you, and you just say, Yahweh Nissi, the Lord is my banner. I remember the miracles. I remember the great things that he has done. I remember that altar that's up on that hill where more Moses stood. It's still there. And we mark in our lives the different miracles that have come to us. And so at that time, I was dealing with planting a church in Honduras, which was absolutely impossible. I don't know the language, I don't know the culture, the money was an issue, just everything. And yet I felt God moving me into it. And I needed not, not just to, to look to God and belong to God, I needed to look to God and believe to believe that he's gonna be with me and he's gonna move me through this. And he did. That's another marker. That's another victory that we have on our trail of victories for Christian Life Church that, that we can rehearse. <clears throat> All that happened. And so now, after that, we're ready to receive the next miracle. We're ready to believe what God has for us next. We're gonna look and belong, look to God and belong. We're gonna look to God and believe. You see, um, sometimes we have problems uh, when we're trying to do good things. And so in the desert, snakes came about and, and uh, God had Moses build a pole with a bronze serpent on it. And, and he basically said, if you get bit, look to the serpent and live. Look to the flag, it was on a pole, the ensign, it was Nisi. And, and so someone could have said, no, I'm not looking, I don't believe. Would they have got healed? No, they would have died, and many did. But those that looked, those that belonged, and then those that believed enough to turn and say, you know, Lord, I believe it, I'm gonna look to you and live, they all lived. And so it's not enough just to look to God, we have to believe in God, be ready to move with God. And we have seen him at Christian Life Church time and time again, moving us and then being faithful to that move and, and filling it in. This idea of <coughs> the bronze serpent on a pole is a very uh, stark symbol of the Christ on the cross. And really, it's that that we look to, what God did for us, what a, what a marker for all humanity, the cross where Jesus died. And we remember, and that's the only cure um, for, for uh, our sin problem. The only cure that will transition us into heaven. And it's also a help in the battles we fight here now when we look to God and we belong and we look to God and we believe. Those are important. And one more thing, when Moses was standing up there on the on the hillside, you know what he had in his hands? He had a staff in his hands. And I want you to tell me, can you see my hands out here? Okay, so I'm gonna back up, can you see my hands? So I'm gonna tell you, what do, you, what do I look like when I'm standing here and I have a, a, um, my staff in my hand, maybe it's behind my head, and I'm standing like this, what do I look like? Does it look like Christ on the cross? That another just symbol of that kind of thing. And so we wanna receive by believing, we wanna, receive help and healing and eternal life by believing in Christ. Um, so we, we belong, we look to God and belong <clears throat> to the kingdom of God. We look to God and we believe in the Christ and in the Lord. And thirdly and lastly, <coughs> we look and battle. We belong, we believe and we battle. We run to that flag, we run to our Lord in the direction he's giving us, we rally and we go into that battle, whatever the next battle will be. <coughs> Sometimes it's a spiritual battle. And it was in the desert for some, and they failed the test. The Bible says, and the sons of Eliab contended against Moses in the company of Korah against the Lord. 
and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up along with Korah when that company died when the fire devoured 250 men so that they may become a Nisi, a warning, a flag. Um, so when we are tempted, when we feel like we're weakening and we're failing, we want to look at that flag. We want to open the scripture. And there's a lot of flags in the scripture that says, look at that. That's a warning not to go in that direction, but to be strong always in the Lord. And well, we can see by others' example, both in victory and following the Lord and failure and defeat by not following the Lord. And so this, um, this altar that Moses built is really the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my rallying point. And so when we're to go to battle, we rally around God. God's really our ensign, our standard, our flag, our, our captain of the host. <clears throat> and so I want to read you this entire passage and, and, and remind you that the Amalekite battle was the first battle out of Egypt. They had gone out of Egypt, gone through Sinai, through the desert, and this was the first battle they fought. So let me read this larger part of this same passage with that in mind. Here we go. Verse 5. And again, I'm in um, Exodus chapter 17. Verse 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people. In other words, I want all the people to see you. And take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile. So that staff, that symbol, that flag pole, that flag struck the Nile. He's saying, walk with that in front of all the people so they see that staff in your hand. They already know what you did in the Nile. Turned it to blood. Verse 6, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock. Now you're going to use the staff to strike the rock. <clears throat> and water will come out of it that the people may drink. You see what's happening here? It's not the staff, it's God. It's pointing to God. They're looking to God, but it's an emblem of that God is with them. And that he's using this emblem. Then Amalek came. This is verse 8, right in that same thing. Struck the Nile, struck the rock for water. And now Amal Amalek came and fought against Israel. So Moses said to Joshua, choose men for us and go out, fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I'll station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And the people like, wow, okay, God is with us. It was a symbol that he is with us. So it came about when Moses held up his hand with the staff that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. <clears throat> then they took a stone. Battle is hard sometimes for pastors, for people. And put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and her supported his hands one on one side and one on the other. Thus, his hands were steady until the sun set. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. You see, the staff didn't have any magical qualities. It just was a memorial. It was a flag. It was an emblem. It was an ensign and a standard to remind the people, I am with you. I was with you when that staff touched the Nile and it turned to blood. And listen to the passage. It says, and he lifted up the staff and struck the water that was in the Nile in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the water that was in the Nile was turned to blood. You know what God was doing? He says, I'm planting my flag right here. I'm, I want you to see this, Pharaoh. This is my flag and these are my people. God is planting his kingdom. He's planting his flag in the midst of us. And then when the water gushed from the rock, strike the rock and water will come out of it that my people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Every one of these, were, they, with the, with the uh, staff, with, with the miracle, God said in the sight of someone. He wanted to people's, people to see. So there in the desert, when they needed water, God was saying, I'm planting my staff. I'm planting my flag right here because I want you to know I am with you and I am for you and I'm going to provide for you. And, uh, and then in the battle with the Amalekites, he lifted and lower, what, lowered what? The staff. And, and the people could see the flag flying. God is with us. The flag of God, his dominion, his kingdom, his power. 
And so when we go to an altar, we're, we're really raising a flag. And so in conclusion, God's flag continues to be planted. His kingdom marches on. When we make God our banner, um, like Moses and the people did, when we make him our, we, we look to God and we belong to the kingdom. We look to God and we believe in the Christ and what he did for us. And we, we look and battle. We're ready to rally when God tells us, do build a church or, or hire some staff and do family ministry, whatever it is. We're gonna rally together around what God is calling us to do, around our flag, and do it. <coughs> and fight the battle. So fly your banner all the time. Now, now, you have it flying in your heart, now fly it so others can see it and so they can fly the banner too. You know that credit card American, American Express, what's the saying behind it, the slang, the slogan? Don't leave home without it. And I wanna say, listen, every morning, Get that banner flying. Remember, he's your protector, your provider. He's with you, he's on your side. He's fighting for you, and he's showing us the next step that we gotta take. Of course, we wanna leave the, we don't wanna leave our home in the morning without it. Fly your banner high. The Lord is my banner. Yahweh Nisi. I look to him, and I belong. I look to him, and I believe. And I look to him, and I battle. I'm ready to battle. And so, as you know, it all, Worked out good with Honduras. But, but what spurred me on are those, were those memorials, those altars, those answered prayers with miracles. You probably remember some of them, the rain that stopped, the bridge that we didn't have to build, the luggage that was miraculously paid for, and the wonderful teams that went down there and worked so hard. Rally, every time that was a step of faith, rallying points around what God was gonna do, and he did them. You know, one of my biggest rallying points in my life is Christian Life Church. When I go to Christian Life Church, that's a rally for me. That's an ensign, that's a, that's a flag, that's God's banner right there. And um, he brings victory, to, he's brought us so many victories. And right now, we're, we, we remember, he touched the Nile, he, he touched the rock, miracle, miracle. He lifted up, he, he, he took care of the Amalekites, he took care of Honduras and the, the parsonage and so many more miracles. And now we're moving into the next victory. And I'm gonna ask you to belong to the kingdom of God, belong. Look to God and belong. Look to God and believe. He has so much for you, so much for all of us. And then look to God ready to, ready to do his will. So let me pray for you, Father. Lord, I just pray along with anyone else that would like to receive you as savior, that Lord, forgive, forgive me for the ways I've hurt you and sinned against you, I'm sorry for that. I believe, Lord, you died on the cross for me and I receive that. And I receive that into my life, Lord God, and give you my life and I commit to following you all the days of my life. Wash me clean, Lord. I receive it in Jesus' name. And also, um, Lord, show us the next step and help us to rally together and not be afraid, but to move forward. We thank you, Lord, that the Lord is my banner and we wanna fly it high. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. We're still doing Tuesday night prayer and Thursday night Bible study on Zoom. Just tune in. And uh, we're gonna keep meeting. We're gonna meet outside as much as we can, but then we're gonna be getting ready to move inside at some point. Well, know that I love and value you, and God bless you.
You are the reason 